Hi, this is Andreas from Predictera. In this video tutorial, you will learn how to use Breeze to make a classification model from hyperspectral images and then use it to predict a class of new unknown samples. Breeze is organized into four different views, each with a specific purpose, as noted under the button for each view. Let's start by going to the record view. As you can see, we already have a study here called Powder Quantification. To add a new study, press the Add button in the lower left corner. Here you can then select to add a new empty study, uh, where you could then record new images from your camera, or import previously recorded image data from your hard drive, or, like I will do in this case, uh, import uh, tutorial data from the internet. And in this case, I will select to use a tutorial called NUTS Classification. A study called NUTS Classification has now been created. That includes uh, eight uh, different hyperspectral images with either NUTS or shell that will be used as the training data, and one test image with a mix of different NUTS and shell. Let's open this NUTS Classification study. As you can see, the image data in the study is organized into two groups called train and test. Let's open the train group. In the measurement level, you can now see the individual hyperspectral images in the menu on the left side. Let's select the measurement and click on the Pixel Explore tab. To do a quick analysis of the spectral variation in the image, a PCA model has been created based on all pixels and all spectral bands in the hyperspectral image. Each point in the variance scatter plot corresponds to a pixel in the image. The points in the scatter plot are clustered based on the spectral similarity, and the color is based on the density, or how closely the points are clustering together. The max variance image is colored by the variation in the first component of the PSA model, which then corresponds to the x-axis in the scatter plot. And this visualizes the biggest spectral variation in the image. In this case, this is the difference between the samples in red and the background in blue. By selecting cluster points in the scatter plot, you can see where these pixels are located in the image. and also see the average spectra for that selection. Let's press the up button in the upper left corner to return to the group level, and then again to go to the study level. Now let's enter the reference data for the training samples, which is the class type variable. To do that, you will first press the add variable or ID button under the table. Then you will select the type of variable, which is in this case is a category or a classification variable, and then write the name. A column for the not or shell variable has now been added to the table. Hold down control on your keyboard and use your mouse to select all the not samples so the almond, hazelnut, pecan, and walnuts are selected. Then I will right click on the selected row and write the name NUT. In the same way, I will then select the samples with a shell. Right click and then write the name. The next step is to create a sample model to remove the background pixels and to automatically identify the objects, the nut or shell samples, in these images. To do that, I will first press the Add Sample Model button underneath the table. In the first step of the Sample Model Wizard, you can select images that you will use in the model. By default, all measurements are included which is okay. 
In the next step of the wizard, you can select spectral bands or wavelengths to use in the model. By default, all wavelengths are included except the first and last band, which is OK. So I will press Next here. A mosaic has now been created of the selected images, and the PCA model has been created from all the pixels in this mosaic. The goal is to select and include only the pixels that belong to the sample that then will be used to make a sample model. If I select all points in the cluster in the scatter plot, I can see in the image that these pixels belong to the samples. And you can use the mouse scroll wheel if you want to zoom in. If I then press the include only button, the pixels from the background will be excluded and the PCA model will be updated with only the sample pixels. To clean up the sample pixels even more, you can remove the border pixels around each sample object. In the next step of the wizard, you will select the critical distance threshold. This is the distance to the sample model and will be used to determine if a pixel are sample or not. Drag the red line in the histogram to the right to move the threshold. The aim is to find a level where all the sample pixels are included, but not pixels belonging to the background. In the last step of the sample model wizard, you can set a minimum area size. This is used to automatically exclude smaller objects that are unwanted, like dust or dirt. In this example, any objects under 300 pixels will be excluded from the image, which is OK. In the table for the study, you can now see all the sample objects in the images after the sample model has been applied and the background pixel has been removed. By clicking in the nuts or shell column in the table, you can color all objects in the preview based on the class. You can also click on the objects in the preview image to see where they are in the table. Let's press the Explore tab. A PCA model has been created based on the average spectrum for each sample object. This allows us to see which objects are similar or different to each other. In the menu on the right, you can select to color the scatterplot based on the different category values or add labels. We will now use the average spectrum for each sample object and the class type that you have set to train a classification model. I will start by pressing the model button in the lower right corner of the screen to move to the model view. In the menu on the left side, you can see the sample model that you created before. To make a classification model, Press the Add button in the lower left corner, and then press the Classification tab. In the first step of the classification wizard, you can select the category variables that you will use to build the model. In this case, we only have the NUT or SHELL variable. In the second step of the wizard, you can select the samples that you want to include in the model. By default, all the samples in the train group have been included, and the test group has been excluded. In the next step of the wizard, you can see the wavelengths or spectral bands that are included in the model. Uh, the graph on the right side is showing the average spectrum for each sample and the spectral bands that will be included in the model are highlighted in green. Above this graph, there is an option to select different spectral pretreatments. Uh, by default, S and V is used, which works well in many cases. A PLSDA classification model has now been calculated. The overview total for all Y graph is showing how good the PLSDA model is. In this case, the order fit function has used three components for this PLSDA model. 
the red bar which is the model fit and the blue bar which is the prediction from cross validation are around 0.95 in this case indicating a very good model the distance to the model in x and y graphs show the distance to the model for each sample a high bar indicating that the sample does not fit to the model and might be an outlier the model scatter plot is showing us how the samples cluster in the model this scatter plot together with the distance to model graphs can be used to identify and exclude outliers In the last step of the wizard, you can evaluate how good the model is. The Nutter shell versus Y-Calc Nutter shell is showing how good the separation is between the two classes. The variable overview plot is showing the R-square and the Q-square for both classes. In this case, these are both close to 1, indicating we have a very good model. The classification model has now been saved, as you can see in the menu on the left. With this model selected, I will press the classification tab to see how many samples were correctly classified. In this case, we can see that all the not or shell samples were correctly classified. In the next step, I will make an analysis workflow that will use this classification model to analyze the test image with unknown samples. To do that, I will press the play button in the lower right corner to move from the model mode to the play mode. Once in the play mode, I will press the add button to make a new workflow. In the window that appears, I will select to use record data and I will select to use the uh, test image, which had the unknown samples. A table is generated with a predicted class of all samples in the test image using our classification model. Based on the average spectrum for the object and a prediction for each pixel. By pressing the graph tab, I can see the steps involved in the workflow. First, each measurement or image is analyzed by our sample model, which then calculates uh, the sample object. For each sample object, it then calculates uh, the class using our not or shell PLS classification model. In addition to analyzing images that are already recorded on your hard drive, you can also use Breeze to analyze images in real time directly from the camera. If your computer is not connected to a camera, you can simulate this by using the camera simulator in Breeze. To do that, press the analyze button. In the window that appears, I will select to generate a new group to store these images. As you can see, the image is analyzed in real time and the results are displayed in the table. Thank you for watching this Breeze video tutorial. If you would like to have step-by-step -step instructions on what I just showed you in this video, I recommend that you visit the Predictera website, where you can download the Breeze tutorial PDF called Classification of Nuts Step 1 Basic. And you can also download a free 30-day trial of Breeze from my website. Good luck!